We're now going to look at a completely different example of a component, but still relate its analysis to the seven-step process we used for the hub. In this case, we're looking at the main chassis tub. This is literally the backbone and shell of the car and houses the driver, fuel tank and controls. The front suspension attaches to it and the whole rear end of the car, engine and all, is attached at the back. Incidentally, the word chassis, tub, and indeed chassis tub, refer to the same part. The tub is made of a carbon fibre composite, sandwiching an aluminium honeycomb core, and is immensely strong, protecting the driver in the event of quite major accidents and impacts. Another crucial difference from the hub is that the tub is subject to a range of mandatory safety regulations and tests which apply to all teams' cars. Thus, apart from carrying the working loads, there are some additional worst cases in the form of practical tests. Such tests are vital in assessing performance and harnessing data on the properties of the material used. One reason being that the material properties are not quite as easy to determine as are the hub steel properties. As with the hub though, we'll be looking at a specific load case for the tub, one which enables the team to compare new designs or modifications from one model to the next. Once again, before we can consider building a model of the tub, we need to understand what it is. What does it do and how does it interact with other components on the car? We'll begin with Lewis describing the component. This is the chassis, which is of carbon fibre composite construction. And this does many jobs. Um, if we go through them in turn, one is to try and receive all the suspension loads from the wheels and carry them into the tub or the chassis and then out, out into the rest of the car. So the suspension members here you see mounted, they carry all the forces from the wheel into this part. The second of which is to receive loads from impact structures on the front and side of the car. And the third is for a rollover incident where there's two main areas of the car to try and resist those loads. There are many regulations we need to try and sort of satisfy, basically, which come in via both impact tests on the front and the side of the car, which is the nose box, which isn't shown here, but the forces obviously are reacted by this component. And the side of the car also adjacent to the driver to give him some protection in the side impact. And um, the seat belt mountings are obviously in here. And also there are roll hoops, which again, for the regulations, we need to uh, satisfy two load tests. One of which is at the front of the cockpit here. You can only see this fin here, but there are actually a considerable reinforcement under here to take the forces. Another one up here, which protects his head from it in a rollover incident, which protects the driver in the event of rolling over. And then between the driver and the rear bulkhead is the fuel cell. And the rear bulkhead is basically where the chassis finishes and the rest of the car begins. And it's held on just using a handful of fasteners only. So now we know quite a bit about the tub. We know it is made from carbon fibre composites. As a cocoon for the driver, it needs to be immensely strong and is subject to a range of impact tests to ensure that it meets the standards stipulated by the governing bodies of Formula One. We also know that all the car's major components, such as the engine, are mounted directly onto the tub and that the suspension members carry the forces generated by the wheels into the tub and out into the rest of the car.